Stand by for crime. Hi, Chuck Morgan talking, KOP newscaster. You know, people who live in Los Angeles sooner or later find their way down into old Mexico. Well, Carol Curtis, my blonde secretary, and I took a day off last week and drove down into Tijuana to have a look around. It was dark when we got started back. At customs, it turned out that one of the officers was a friend of mine. So we were waved ahead with no more than a cursory glance inside the jalopy. Well, we're back in the good old USA, Glamourless. You feel good? Oh, frankly, I don't feel any different than I did ten minutes ago. Oh, gosh, Chuck, there were an awful lot of cars lined up at customs. That's unusual, isn't it? Yeah, probably some of the boys got a tip that an attempt was going to be made to get some marijuana or something else through. Oh, golly, it's lucky you knew where the customs office is. Yeah. We might have been there for an hour or more. That's how it is when you have influence. Oh, now, don't start bragging. It wasn't that important. <laughs> yeah, go to sleep, Glamour, but I can see you're spoiling for a fight. Oh, maybe that isn't such a bad idea. Well, aren't you going to move your shoulder? Hmm? Oh, <laughs> sure. Yeah. How's that? Better? Mm, yeah, that's fine. Oh, good night, Chucky boy. Mm-hmm. Glamopus. Glamopus, wake up. Well, what's the matter? There's a roadblock up ahead. They might think you're drunk if they see you sprawled out like that. I'm not sprawled out. And, uh, what's the roadblock for? I will know in a minute. Now, you don't have to fix your face. There are only a couple of cops. They're men, aren't they? They're men, aren't they? Women, I'll never understand them. Hello, officer. You must expect something pretty hot coming over tonight. We do. You've been below the border? Yeah, that's right. Let me have a look at your driver's license. Oh, yeah, sure. Here you are. Thanks. What's he doing in our trunk compartment? Just a routine check, lady. You might come back here. Yeah, what is it, Ed? And says, Chuck, what could possibly be in the trunk compartment that would excite so much interest? I haven't the faintest idea. The last time I looked there, there wasn't anything but a deflated inner tube. Okay, you two. We found what we're looking for in your trunk compartment. You did? What is it? A dead body. time proving we weren't murderers carrying our victims around in the trunk compartment of the car. Mike Tanner, the border patrol officer who had stopped us, called my friend at customs, then he called Happy Mansfield, owner of KOP, then he called Bill Meggs of police headquarters in L.A. Well, I guess you're clear, Morgan. Sorry to have inconvenienced you. Well, I should think you would be. Shut up, Grandma Puss. What's all right, Mike? Now that the excitement's over, who was the stowaway we packed across the border? Name's Jose Gonzalez, a wetback. A wetback? thought Mexicans didn't become wetbacks until they got over the line. This one had been over and went back again. Oh. Well, that sounds like something I could use in one of my broadcasts. Do you mind filling me in? Well, I don't know. We've been keeping this pretty quiet. Oh, Chuck will give you plenty of publicity, Mike. He'll make a hero out of you. Won't you, Chuck? I'm a person. I should shut up. I'll bop you one. Well, I was only trying to help. Well, as a matter of fact, a little publicity wouldn't hurt the Border Patrol a bit. Maybe if more people knew the job we had to do down here and how badly in a man we were, it might plant a seed that would bear fruit. Well, that's a good deal, Mike. You can count me in. Now, what's all the hubbub about? Well, we've suspected for a long time that someone on this side of the border is operating a wholesale smuggling ring. Hmm. He's guaranteeing to get any Mexican into the country and get him a job at a price. What makes you think that? Because this operator, whoever he is, knows exactly when and where the border patrol is at any given time. As I mentioned before, we're undermanned. We have to concentrate on one spot at a time. I see. I suppose you've suspected a leakage in your own ranks and checked. Oh, yeah. And we're positive it isn't an inside job. Well, what makes you so positive? Well, a week ago we found four corpses in a place called Dead Horse Canyon. Four? All of them were wetbacks, and all of them had been shot with a thirty thirty special. Well, how does that make you so positive? Because originally there were five in that group. One of them was a member of our patrol. He'd gone below the border and set himself up as a laborer. Who wanted to get into the United States. Uh-huh. He came across with four others. Apparently, the American contact got suspicious. And decided to kill all five rather than take chances. And the fifth one, your man got away, huh? Uh, that's right. He escaped back into Mexico. Yesterday, he was murdered. His body was the one you've been carrying in your trunk compartment. Jose Gonzalez. <laughs> Well, 
Well, it wasn't a pretty picture. The American smuggler had apparently wanted to show the Border Patrol it was wasting its time. They probably picked my car by design, knowing I'd give the story some publicity which would serve as a warning to any other patrol members who got ideas of becoming a spy. Well, Mike Tanner told me the location of Dead Horse Canyon, and then Carol and I started north again. Oh, golly, I'm glad we're getting out of there. Now I do feel better that we're back in the United States. Chuck. Hmm? What? Chuck Morgan, now what are you up to? What do you mean, what am I up to? I'm just driving along, minding my own business? Well, that's just it. You're not minding your own business. You're minding somebody else's business. I know you. What do you think you're going to do? I know what I'm going to do, Grandma Puss. First, I'm going to put you on a train at the next town and send you back to L.A. You are not. You're to tell Pappy that if I'm not back by 7 o'clock tomorrow night to get a substitute to do my broadcast. I won't do it. Then I'm going to take a run over to Dead Horse Canyon. Then I'm going And if you, you don't shut up, I won't even put you on a train. I'll let you hitchhike your way back. Well, I finally persuaded Carol to take the train by promising I'd do some serious thinking about making a down payment on the diamond ring she'd been needling me about ever since she'd decided we were engaged. Then I turned the jalopy around and headed back south. My watch told me it was 3.30 in the morning when I came to the turnoff that Mike Tanner had said would take me to Dead Horse Canyon. By 5 o'clock, it was full daylight. I rounded a curve in the mountains and stopped short. A rogue gang was just starting their day's labors. One man was sitting on a boulder, cleaning his tools. Four others were emerging from a tent that was pitched in the only available flat area within miles. I got out of the car and approached the man on the boulder. Hello there. Didn't expect to find a rogue gang way down here. Buenos dias, senor. The road must be maintained even way down here, see? <laughs> I suppose you're right. Where's the road lead to, anyhow? Oh, this road? Mm. To Dead Horse Canyon. Well, that's where I'm going. What do I find when I get there? Oh, well, there's nothing there, senor. Well, then why the road? Well, the road, senor, is a shortcut into old Mexico. Uh-huh. Who uses it? The rancher, senor, who trade with Mexico. Also the border patrol. You're kidding. Well, I haven't seen a ranch or a human being for the past two hours. Where are these ranches located? Oh, back in the hill, senor. There are eight. Oh, they don't. How, how far did you say it was to Dead Horse Canyon? Ten miles, senor, but there's nothing there. You, you looking for somebody? Yeah, it could be. Why? The one who killed the four wetbacks, maybe? Yeah, you know about that, huh? Oh, see, this is a very bad thing, senor, to shoot people. Yes, I'll buy that. Were the four who were shot friends of yours? Oh, no, senor. They were from below the border. I am an American. So, any idea who did the shooting? It's a strange thing, senor. We're here working on the road all the time, and there's no one who passes by except the border patrol man. Yeah, that is strange. Isn't any other road, huh? No, no, senor. This is the only one. And the man who did the shooting must have come in by horseback or walk. See, or, or perhaps he came up from Mexico. Yeah, that's a possibility. How far is it to the border? About 20 miles. 20, huh? You expecting the border patrol through here today? Well, one never knows. Sometimes it's every day and sometimes it's only once a week. Yes, yeah, see. All right, thanks for the information. If you see any suspicious characters around, let me know, will you? I'll be along this road someplace. Si, senor. Adios. Adios. I climbed back to the jalopy and started south again. Maybe some member of the rogue gang was getting the information about the location of the border patrol through to the smuggling agent. Ah, it was out. How could he do it? There weren't any telephone or telegraph lines. Wasn't likely that a messenger could try to get through if the patrol were infiltrating the district. So I kept on driving, and the day kept getting hotter, and the country more desolate and rugged looking. After a while, I came to what must have been Dead Horse Canyon. It was a narrow gorge running between two high-flung ridges. The floor of the canyon was as dry as a bone. The ridges were without vegetation. I slowed down. I was thinking about getting out and taking a look around when... There wasn't any doubt but that shot was meant for me. The bullet plowed up a small geyser of dust in front of the jalopy. I instinctively stepped on the gas, thinking it would be a good idea to get out of there fast, but forgetting there was no place to go. The second shot proved that the marksman meant business. The bullet socked into my left front tire. The jalopy slewed around and almost turned over. I clamped on the brakes and got out. There was a boulder ten paces away that offered good cover. I shot a glance up at the left-hand ridge. 
saw a man with a rifle standing out in full view, the muzzle of his gun trained on me. Then I started for the protection of the boulder fast. I covered half the distance when... Now, the conclusion of Stand By for Crime. I was dreaming that I was lying on the ground with my head in the lap of a beautiful girl. She was stroking my hair and talking softly. Every once in a while, I'd ask for water, and she'd hold a canteen to my mouth, and the cool, beautiful liquid would flow between my lips and down my throat. I let the dream continue for as long as I dared, and then I opened my eyes and said, Hello. Ah, oh, Senor Morgan, you are better? Yeah, I think I'll live. Uh, just uh, keep stroking my head. Oh, but, senor, you have been shot. Yeah, I know. Oh, who bundled me up in this bandage, you? Ah, si, senor, it was I. Ah, thanks. What's your name? Where'd you come from, Angel of Mercy? How did you know my name and who shot me? <laughs> Those are many questions at once, senor. I shall answer them in order. My name is Rosita. Rosita, I like that. I came from up there on the ridge. And I know your name because I looked at your driver's license. Well, that figures. Now, can you tell me who it was that shot at me? Oh, yes, senor. It was I who shot at you. A thousand pardons for the mistake I made. You shot at me? Now, wait a minute. That calls for an explanation. Oh, and you shall have it, senor. You see, at first I thought you were someone else, but even thinking so, I did not intend to hit you. I aimed in front of you. You ran too fast, senor. Yeah, yeah, I was traveling all right, but I didn't think I was going fast enough to outrun a bullet. Who was this other guy you thought I might be? The man who murdered my husband, senor. Murdered you? Well, this is getting more interesting by the minute. Hold it a second. Is, is your last name Gonzalez? Si, senor. Then you're the widow of the Border Patrol agent, Jose Gonzalez. Si. I came up from Mexico last night by horseback. I shall not rest until I have avenged my husband's death. Now, what makes you think you'll find the murderer up here? Jose was shot in Tijuana, wasn't he? Before Jose was shot down, he told me about a terrible thing that happened here in Dead Horse Canyon. Yeah? I am convinced that the murderer is an American smoker of, well, the smoker of poor Mexicans, and that sooner or later he will appear once more in this place. Do the authorities know what you're up to? I have told the authorities nothing. So far, they have been unsuccessful in apprehending this man. The wet bucks pass through the canyon at will. And you think that one lone woman can clean up this gang of smugglers, eh? It is because I am a woman that my chances are good. So far, no one but you knows of my presence here. You will tell no one, senor. Rosita, is that a statement or a question? You must promise, senor, or I shall have to hold you as my prisoner. Oh, that's not a bad idea. Where's your camp, Rosita? Uh, it is up there in a little glade. Oh. There is a spring and I have food. Do you feel strong enough to walk? Yeah, I think so. Uh, oh. Oh. <laughs> Stop spinning around like that, will you? Oh, there, you see, you are not strong as you think. Put your arm around my shoulder. Uh, so. Uh, there. Thanks. Mm, I like this. Let's go. The dizziness passed as we walked up to Rosita's camp, but I didn't take my arm from around her shoulder. I'm no fool. Anyhow, by the time we got to the glade, I was pretty weak. Rosita's bullet had clipped a hunk of flesh out of my left shoulder, and a loss of blood wasn't doing me any good. It took more than 30 minutes to reach the camp, but it was worth it. It was cool beneath the shade trees, and a crystal clear stream flowed out from beneath two huge rocks. There. Sit here in the shade, senor, and rest. <laughs> Thanks. There. Yeah, you picked yourself quite a spot. Jose and I camp here often when he... When he was a member of the patrol. Yeah, I'm sorry. This, this must be pretty tough on you. See, si, it is, as you say, tough. But look, here I command a view of the entire canyon. You see, no one can pass without my seeing him. Yeah, yeah, it is a good vantage point, all right. Jose and I spent many days here waiting for the smugglers, but they never came. Huh. Only when we were on the other side of the mountain did they use dead horse. It was most mysterious. But now I must prepare us some breakfast. Then you must rest and not talk, senor. I hadn't eaten since the night before in Tijuana, and I hadn't thought much about it. 
But when I smelled the bacon hotcakes and coffee that Rosita threw together, I became ravenous. Later, I must have dozed, because the next thing I knew, it was past noon. Rosita was gone. A moment later, I spotted her. She was changing the flat tire on my jalopy. Then something else caught my eye. A flash of sunlight on steel. Possibly a rifle barrel. It didn't come again. And I didn't see the man who was holding it. But I began getting ideas. I walked over to where was Zita had left her rifle and picked it up. 30-30 special. I ejected the shells, put them in my pocket, placed the rifle back where I found it. Rosita was coming up the slope, the sunlight bright in her dark hair. That's no job for a lady. You should have waited until I woke up. It was nothing, senor, and after all, it was I who made the tire flat. <laughs> Do you feel stronger now? Yeah, I'm fine, fit as a fiddle. You all ready to leave? Leave, senor? Look, Rosita, it's foolish of you to think you can stay here and fight a whole gang of smugglers. I can't stay with you, oh, so senor you... Morgan, you do not understand. I have been on many patrols with my husband. I am quite capable Sorry, of... Sorry, Rosita, you're coming with me. And I say I am not. I say. Are you going to shoot a hole in my other shoulder? I will shoot, senor, if you try to force me to go with you. I bet you wouldn't. Stop, senor. I warn you. you better shoot now, Rosita. If you don't, I'm going to take that rifle away from you. Stop! <laughs> I'm sorry, Rosita. Oh, senor. You are unkind. You knew I would not shoot. And this is where I want to stay. This is what Jose would expect me to do. No, I don't think so. I think that Jose would want you to go to the patrol and give them any information you might have. I have no information, none at all. I think you have, Rosita, quite a lot, in fact. And that added to a couple of theories I have will clear up this whole mystery. Now, come along. Let's get started. So Rosita and I staked out our horse near the spring and started back north. It was after four o'clock when we passed the rogue gang. Their eyes bugged out at sight of my passenger. Rosita waved, called a couple of names, and they yelled something to her in Spanish. Just after dark, we pulled up in front of the border patrol station at Las Vertes. I wasn't too surprised to find Pappy Mansfield's green coupe parked outside. He was there in the waiting room, and Glamour Puss, of course, was with him. Well... Where do you two come from? Never mind that. Where the devil have you been? Now, now, no, Pappy, don't get excited. And who is this with you? This glamour puss is Rosita Gonzalez. She's pretty, isn't she? Oh, oh Mike. Oh, Mike. Rosita, what are you doing here? I found her down in Dead Horse Canyon, Mike. She just rode in with me. I guess it's the first time she's talked to Jose, to someone who knew him. Oh, I see. Yeah. There, baby, I know it's tough, but those things will happen. We'll get the guys who did it. Don't worry about that. I wish someone would explain to me what this is all about. What's that bulge on your shoulder, Chuck? Oh, I had a little accident. It's okay. Didn't Carol tell you about the swell story I latched onto? She told me you sent her home and went gallivanting off to a place called Dead Horse Canyon. So? So I came down to see what it was all about and keep you out of trouble. Yeah. And what did you come down for, Carol? You big squealer. Oh, I just came along for the ride. <laughs> but I can see now I made no mistake. Uh, where did you say you spent last night? I didn't say. And you two are a couple of liars. You thought there was going to be some excitement, and you wanted in, didn't you? Well, isn't there? Isn't there what? Going to be some excitement? Yeah, I, I think we can arrange something for you, Pappy. Mike, how about that rogue gang working north of Dead Horse? Well, I've known them for years. Huh? I checked them just to make sure. But there wasn't much to check, since the only way they could get a message over into Mexico is by mule bank. There wouldn't be time for that, even if a spy could get away from the camp without being missed, which he couldn't. Yeah, well, that takes care of that. A month ago, we had a three-day rain period, remember? Were any, uh, wetbacks smuggled across during that period? Now, that's a good question. Uh, typical. Well, that's kind of hard to remember. I'd have to check the record. No, you won't, Mike. No, you won't. Because I can tell you right now, there weren't. Now, here's my theory, and here's a plan. It might work. Tomorrow morning, send a couple of men down to Dead Horse Canyon. At ten o'clock that night, Carol, Rosita, Pappy, and I, riding a my jalopy, followed the tail light of a border patrol car containing four officers up into the hills on the other side of the mountain from Dead Horse Canyon. Just before midnight, the patrol car pulled off the road and stopped. This is spot, Mike? Up ahead, around the bend. We'll have to walk. I didn't want to warn them with our headlights. Right. Now, you go ahead. We'll follow. So we walked up the road around the bend and found that two of the officers had rolled a boulder into the road between the high embankments. It served as a perfect roadblock. Chuck, you take your gang up on the left bank and keep them down and out of sight. Right. We'll be over here. 
If there's any shooting, I don't want the responsibility of any of you getting hit. Don't worry, I'll keep him quiet, Mike. Good. We'll probably have a wait of about an hour or two. Any questions? Ah, no questions. We're fine. Come on, everyone. An hour or two? Who he spoke with? He froze and stiff. You can go back if you want to glamour for sister time. And leave you here with... Uh, yeah. With Pappy? Well, I guess not. Uh, I didn't think you had. Come on now. Up you go. So we climbed the embankment, found as comfortable a spot as possible behind some live oak, and sat down to wait. To wait is right. It was an hour before we heard it. The sound of a truck... It was still miles off, but it was coming steadily toward us. There wasn't any question that was on the road where we waited, simply because there wasn't any other road. Then we caught glimpses of its headlights as they swung around the sharp mountain curves. This was it. There wasn't any telling what might happen. I began regretting allowing Carol and Rosita to come along in this party, but it was too late for regrets now. The truck had made the last curve and was roaring down the dirt road straight for the boulder. It seemed to me the driver was blind. He didn't see the boulder until he was practically on top of it. Then... All right, you two in the cab, come out with your hands up. Get him, Jed. Come on, cargo of the truck, the wetbacks, who'd stampeded up the embankment on our side of the road. But when they saw Pappy and me charging out at them from behind the live oaks, they must have thought the place was alive with Border Patrol cops. They went back down the embankment into the waiting arms of Mike Tanner and his men. Well, the next day, Mike went down and arrested the foreman of the rogue gang on the Dead Horse Canyon Road. Why? because it was a foreman who'd been signaling a lookout on a mountain ridge about the activities of the Border Patrol. He'd been using one of the oldest and simplest signaling systems known to man, heliography, the art of flashing messages by reflected sunlight. Usually a mirror is used, but a mirror isn't necessary. This one used a shining surface of his shovel, which he kept scrupulously polished. Well, that same afternoon, Carol, Pappy, and I drove back to L.A. We got there in plenty of time for dinner at the Knickerbocker Hotel before my 7 o'clock broadcast. Well, Pappy, I guess the time has come. I guess it has, Carol. You know, sometime we're going to fool this lad by not asking. Well, Pappy, that's all right with me. Well? Well, what? How'd you know? Oh, that. Oh, get him. As if he didn't know what we were talking about. All right, Chucky boy. How did you guess about the signal uh, business? I didn't guess. I figured it out. Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. Well, I did. The foreman of the road crew was polishing his shovel before he started work. Mm -hmm. Now, a good laborer cleans his tools after work, not before. Well, that figures. Oh, what else? Well, when I was sitting in our camp, I caught the glint of sunlight in what I thought was a rifle barrel. Well, it couldn't have been a rifle barrel. A rifle barrel is too dark. This glint was too far away. Oh, so that I reminds about... me. What reminds you of what? About that promise you made. What promise? Well, you promised that if I'd take the train back to L.A., you'd buy me a ring. I didn't. <laughs> I said I'd do some serious thinking about it. <laughs> you said you'd buy me one. Oh, I no, hate glamour, you. Glamour, puss. I didn't say any such thing. I can't afford to buy you a ring. <laughs> 